Washington Journal every morning at 7 Eastern here on C-SPAN. The U.S. House returning now for further work on amendments for agriculture appropriations. Votes are expected at about 3.30 Eastern. After votes, we expect the House to recess for a congressional picnic and then return later tonight for more debate. And now live coverage of the U.S. House here on C-SPAN. When the Committee of the Whole House rose on Tuesday, June 14, 2011, a request for a recorder vote on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Richardson, had been postponed and the bill had been read. The House is in the Committee of the Whole House and the State of the Union for further consideration of H.R. 2112, upon which the clerk will report by title. A bill making appropriations for agriculture, rural development, food and drug administration, and related agencies' programs for the fiscal year ending September 30, 2012, and for other purposes. When the Committee of the Whole rose on Tuesday, June 14, 2011, a request for a recorded vote on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Richardson, had been postponed and the bill had been read through page 26, line 17. The clerk will read. Page 26, line 18, Natural Resources Conservation Service, Conservation Operations, $770,956,000 to remain available until September 30, 2013, Watershed Rehabilitation Program, $15 million. For what purpose is the gentleman from Georgia rise? Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. <coughs> Amendment number 10, printed in the Congressional Record, offered by Mr. Brown of Georgia. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized for five minutes in support of his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, my amendment would eliminate one of 20 different conservation programs USDA currently operates, the Water Rehabilitation Program. The chairman of the subcommittee, my good friend from Georgia, has stated during debate on funding for agricultural programs that he hopes to see a reduction in the number of federal programs included in this bill. I understand that some of my colleagues have a vested interest in this program, but when we have a pro program that it is funding projects in only a handful of states, we must take a long, hard look at our priorities. Mr. Chairman, even the President did not request funding for this program. It cannot be understated that we are facing unprecedented fiscal challenges in our nation. We just simply have to stop spending money that we don't have, and we have to start creating jobs out in the private sector. And my amendment will, by cutting this program, will help to stop the bleeding economically that we're having. The consequences, the consequences of failing to reduce spending and the deficit jeopardize the current and future stability of, my na uh, of our nation. I urge my colleagues to support my amendment. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purposes the gentleman seek recognition? Mr. Chairman, I ask to uh, strike the last word. The gentleman from Oklahoma is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise today in opposition to this amendment. And I think it might be worthwhile to explain for just a moment what the uh, small watershed uh, program is and the small uh, watershed rehabilitation program is all about. These were efforts begun in the 1930s sorry, the 1940s and 50s by this body in an effort to address flooding conditions. And under this program, 10,000 uh, small earthen dams were built across the country, working in interlocking series to prevent downstream flooding by capturing floodwaters at the source. Now, like anything, after 50 years, its life expectancy can be expected uh, to come to a conclusion. And in 2000, we created the rehabilitation program to extend the life of these structures by additional time. And it now appears, based on uh, the modern uh, techniques being used, te engineering technologies, that these 50-year structures will wind up with a 150-year total life expectancy in many instances. This is a program where the rehabilitation resources are allocated based on need, as scored by USDA. It's not an earmarked program. It's not a targeted program. The money's made available, and as the structures need work, they are prioritized. It's a wonderful way to address this issue. Now, if you look at the amount of property and life and infrastructure that have been protected in the life of these programs, it's almost incalculable. In Oklahoma, in the range of $81 million a year worth of uh, property saved. 
My colleague alluded to programs that only affect limited numbers of areas. I would note even in the great state of Georgia, there are 357 of these watershed structures. There are 69 that within the next 10 years will need the rehabilitation program. There are benefits in every state. I would just simply say, if you care and you believe that infrastructure is a part of our responsibility, if you believe that protecting every life from below that dam all the way to the ocean is important and the property, then this is a wise, small use of resources. What my friend attempts to do here is to zero out the whole program. No money for rehab this year. No money for rehab this year. That would be a travesty. That would be a tragic uh, use of resources in the past. It's important, I think, that we continue this program. If the gentleman will yield, the chairman. Would yield of, to the gentleman. If the chairman of the agriculture knows um, and uh, is full aware, I wanted to underscore the point that you just made that the ordinary mandatory authorization for this program is 165 million dollars. That has been zeroed out, and the only thing we're doing this year is this 15 million. And so even at the current 15 million level, it's still 150 million less than it ordinarily has been. I would say, in reclaiming my time, that the gentleman is right. This is a dramatic reduction over what had been expected during the Farm Bill. Yet this $15 million will do tremendous work, and it's allocated on a 65-35 cost basis. Local and state government have to come up with a third of the money, more than a third of the money, to be able to implement these rehabilitation programs. For a few pennies, we do a great deal across the country based on need, not anyone's political priorities, but based on need. This is an exceptional program. I would ask my colleagues to turn back this amendment and uh, yield back the balance of my time. On who seeks time? Seeing none, the questions on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia, those in favor signify so by saying aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The noes have it, and the amendment's not agreed to. The clerk will read. Page 28, line 1, Title III, Rural Development, Office of the Undersecretary for Rural Development, $760,000. Rural Development salaries and expenses, including transfers of funds, $161,011,000. Rural Housing Service, Rural Housing Insurance Fund Program Account, including transfer of funds for the cost of direct and guaranteed loans, $40 million. In addition for the cost of direct loans, $12,500,000. In addition for administrative expenses, $400 million. Rental assistance program, $890 million. Multifamily housing revitalization program account, $11 million. Right now. What purpose does the gentleman from Arizona seek recognition? I have an amendment at the desk. Clerk will designate the amendment. Number 28 and 29. Oh, 28. Sorry. Clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Gosar of Arizona. Page 32, line 5, after the dollar amount, insert increase by $100 million. Page 35, line 13, after the dollar amount, insert increase by $100 million. Page 49, line 23, after the dollar amount, insert reduced by $200 million. Yep. Amendments being distributed. More copies. No. No, they just took it. The gentleman from Arizona is recognized for five minutes in support of his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am offering an amendment that reduces the funding for the billion-dollar Food for Peace program. 
Regardless, regardless of its perceived merits, our country is deep in debt, and we have problems here in America, particularly rural America, that need to be addressed. The Food for Peace program has been rightly criticized as a waste of money and ineffective in achieving its stated goals. But the reason for my amendment are more direct. The current budget funding for this program at one, over $1 billion, we stand today with a $14.3 trillion deficit, and at the same time we have unmet needs in our own backyards. My amendment cuts $300 million from this program and sets aside $100 million into the spending reduction account. Then of the remaining $200 million, $100 million each is directed into the Rural Development Title III um, here in the United States. The reason for this amendment is straightforward. Parts of rural America rival parts of some third world countries where we spend tens of millions of dollars. We need to focus our, our, on our own people and our own communities before we spend taxpayer money in foreign lands. One example here in the United States is the area known as the former Bennett Freeze area, an area consisting of 1.5 million acres of Navajo Nation reservation land, where the housing units have been described as little more than hovels, and 80% of the homes have no electricity, and there are just few paved roads or communication structures. How do we justify spending $1 billion in foreign countries when we have so many needs, unmet needs in the United States? The Rural Development Loan Program would receive additional funding under this amendment, a program that gets high marks for its success. So too would the Multifamily Housing Revitalization, Revitalization Program. With millions of people losing homes, they are moving into multi-unit housing. This program would help Americans. It is easy to understand that the emotional appeal program like Food for Peace may have a program that would be reduced by this amendment, but ultimately we are using taxpayer money for charity. Improving literacy, reducing hunger, educating girls in foreign countries are issues that in fact are charitable and emotionally appealing. But we have our own literacy, hunger, and gender issues in our own country. But at a time when we have a $14.3 trillion public debt, massive unemployment, and rural rates of poverty, illiteracy, and school underperformance, we should focus our money here at home. We owe it to our constituents, the taxpayers, to help them. Certainly one can see that this program has laudable aspirations. The laudable aspirations will not help the U.S. economy or the U.S. taxpayer. The problems our U.S. Amer our rural America are staggering. On June 9, 2011, President Obama issued an executive order to create a commission to study problems in rural America. In the executive order, the president stated that 16% of American populations live in rural counties. Strong, sustainable rural communities are essential, are essential to winning the future and ensuring America's competitiveness in years ahead. These communities supply our food, fiber, and energy, safeguard our natural resources, and are essential in the development of science and innovation. Through rural communities face numerous challenges, they also present enormous economic potential. The federal government has an important role to play in order to expand access to capital necessary for economic growth, promote innovation, improve access to health, care, and education, and expand outdoor recreation activities on public lands. I agree. But instead of just forming a committee to study the problems, problems that are well known and need no further study, my amendment would do something about it and direct money to the Multifamily Housing Revitalization Count Program for a Rural Housing Voucher Program and the Rural Business Program Account, which provides loan guarantees and grants for rural businesses development programs, including business grants to Indian tribes and rural economic partnership zones for farm and rural development. Again, instead of just studying the problems of high unemployment, lagging schools, lagging infrastructures and opportunities, let's do something about it. The rural American poverty rate has exceeded the national rate since 2001 by three percentage points. The child poverty rate in rural America is five percentage points higher than urban metropolitan areas. Why can't we invest millions in our rural communities instead? We should, toler we should tolerate poverty, unemployment, and a lack of infrastructure in our rural counties while we send millions and billions of dollars to other countries? In good faith, knowing how hard so many people in my district work and knowing how little they have to show for it at the end of the day, I can't agree to send their money overseas to help others while they suffer in our backyards. Knowing that infrastructure is lacking, this amendment helps start the process of directing our money to the unmet needs here in the United States. I ask my colleagues to closely consider this amendment. Gentlemen, yield back the remainder I of this time. I yield back. Who seeks time?
Gentleman from Georgia. Uh, Mr. Chair, I rise in opposition to the amendment and for five uh, wanted to make a few notes on it. I appreciate my friend for offering it, and I think he's raised some very serious philosophical questions, particularly about PL 480, uh, the foreign food program. I wanted to point out we have reduced that by 31 percent in this account, but we've also reduce the multifamily housing revitalization account um, as he's well aware of, but his amendment would actually increase that 10 times. It's at an $11 million level and, and he would bring that up to $111 million. Um, the, the highest funding level for that was in FY 2010 at $43 million, and so we, we have been ratcheting it down using a voucher program, but feel that it was overfunded. The rural business program account right now is about sixty four million and so so this amendment almost doubles that. Doesn't quite do double it, but um, there again we have brought that account down from a high of ninety seven million and with his amendment it would go up to hundred and sixty four million. These two accounts would go to higher levels than they have historically had and in contrast, the PL 480, the foreign food program, is at one of the lower levels that it that has been at. So um, I, I have to say to my friend that I, I, I'm sorry to reluctantly oppose you, but we are going to oppose the amendment at this point and uh, yield back the balance of my time. Mr. Beckett's time. Who seeks time? Seeing none, the questions on the amendment offered by the gen gentleman from California. I also rise in opposition, Mr. Chairman. recognized for five minutes. I, I think this amendment is well intended. I think the author is well intended. Rural America is hurting. We're, uh, rural America is really under a, a depression. Uh, and we have not done a very good job of having a rural strategy for America. I, I applaud Secretary Vilsack for trying to pull together programs to invest in rural America and make sure that the different agencies in the federal government are working in collaboration. And I think this amendment addresses some of those issues, not not in a collaborative way, but just putting more money into rural uh, uh, America. But unfortunately, um, that good intent is offset by the evil done in taking it out of the of the foreign ag account. And I I can't uh, I can't support the amendment for that. General uh, yields back the balance of his time. If no one's seeking time. Questions on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Arizona. Those in favor, signify so by saying aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. No. May I ask for our nays and nays? Pursuant to recorded vote. Pursuant to clause six of rule 18 for the proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Arizona will be postponed. Clerk will read. Page 32, line 22, mutual and self-help housing grants, $22 million. Rural housing assistant grants, including transfer of for funds. For purposes, the gentleman from, from Oregon seek recognition. Seek to strike the last word. Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I would rise uh, to engage in a colloquy with my friend from California, Mr. Farr, about cuts in this legislation that uh, Mr. Farr, if, if you would yield to our colloquy. Certainly. Thank you. Um, I. As I have been analyzing the legislation coming before us, Mr. Farr, it appears that uh, the legislation, if approved uh, in the form that is before us, would have a really devastating impact upon American farmers, families, and the environment. The legislation before us, as I understand it, cuts nearly a billion dollars from the five main conservation programs. Conservation programs that put money directly in the pockets of family farmers. Over the last five years, these programs have been so popular that the list of farmers who want to participate greatly outweighs the availability. Both the Conservation Stewardship Program and the Environmental Quality Incentives Program have twice as many applicants as they can serve. And the Wetlands Reserve Program and the Grasslands Reserve Programs combined have over a million acres waiting to apply. These are not programs that are underutilized or ineffective. They appear to be widely popular and provide a direct benefit to America's farmers and ranchers. These would appear to be exactly the type of programs we should be supporting 
They provide support for family farms and producers who are doing exactly the right thing, ensuring that we use precious tax dollars not only to support farmers and ranchers, but to ensure clean water, clean air, and fertile, productive soil. They are a blueprint for a better path forward, a farm bill that helps farmers add value and truly supports small and mid-sized op operations. Um, I was wondering if you would care to comment on my concerns. I appreciate my good friend Mr. Blumenauer's uh, sentiments and as ranking member of the House Ag and uh, Appropriations Subcommittee. I'm a strong supporter of these conservation programs used both in Oregon and in my state of California and I'm distressed by the proposed cuts to these programs. I'd like to point out that the Farm Bureau also opposes large cuts to the important Working Lands Program and the Environmental Quality Incentives Program. I find it especially disappointing that these funding levels are low enough that the USDA will have to break current contracts. That is an unfair result for our farmers and ranchers who have counted on the support and technical assistance for the year ahead. The funding levels for the 2008 Farm Bill were carefully negotiated. It is frustrating to me and to many others to see the mandatory funding for conservation programs decrease so drastically because this bill was given such a low allocation. I appreciate the sentiments of my good friend from California as I appreciate his leadership on issues that relate to both agriculture and protecting the environment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm, I am uh, hopeful that members will spend time looking at what this means to farmers and ranchers in their communities uh, and hope that as the legislation works its way through Congress, we will be able to reverse these efforts. Thank you, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The clerk will read. Page 33, line 8, rural housing assistance grants, including transfers of funds, $32 million. Gentleman from uh, Georgia. Mr. Speaker, I have an amendment at the desk. Clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number 11, printed in the congressional record, offered by Mr. Brown of Georgia, page 33, line 12, after the first dollar amount, insert reduced by $20,480,000. Page 80, line 2, after the dollar amount, insert increased by $20,480,000. Gentleman from Georgia is recognized for five minutes in support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to offer my amendment, which would reduce the budget for the Rural Housing Assistance Grant Program by over $20 million. My amendment would drop the allocation for this program from $32 million to just around $12 million. This is a modest request, particularly considering the President initially asked for a funding level of just $12 million. And we would simply be dropping the levels back down to what the administration itself requested. It is absolutely critical that this Congress cut spending wherever possible. And if the President can do without that extra $20 million, so can we. I urge my colleagues to support this common sense amendment. Now I yield back the balance. Gentleman yields time. back his time. Gentleman from California. I rise in opposition. Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. It's very interesting that your colleague, Mr. Gosar, just a minute ago uh, was trying to add money to this account because of the catastrophe in uh, rural, uh, rural America. Uh, this rural housing assistance grants program is primarily to repair very low income uh, rural housing. This account was increased from the request of the President um, by the committee. The effect of this amendment would be to, uh, to knock it back and the reason the committee increased it was because of the n need out there. We know what kind of a housing crisis we're having in America, particularly people have no other place to go. Uh, it's a lot, this is, allows the lowest of income people uh, in the m poorest areas in the country, in rural, rural America, uh, to have some assistance to upgrade their, their houses and to bring them up to so that the cost of, of uh, utilities and, and, and high, high uh, utility bills can be brought with weatherization issues and things like that. I mean, this just is not, this is not a smart cut. This goes to hurting people who can least afford it in a time when they most need it. And I would oppose this amendment. 
gentleman yields back his time. Is further debate, seeing none, the questions on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia, those in favor signify so by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. Opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The noes have it, the amendment is not agreed to. Clerk will read. Rural Community Facilities Program Account, including transfers of funds, $18 million. Rural Business Cooperative Service Rural Business Program Account, including transfers of funds, $64,500,000. Rural Development Loan Fund Program Account, including transfer of funds for the principal amount of direct loans, $14,758,000 for the cost of direct loans, $5 million in addition for administrative expenses, $3,500,000. Rural Economic Development Loans Program Account, including cancellation of funds for the principal amount of direct loans, $33,077,000 of the funds derived from the interest as authorized by Section 313 of the Rural Electrification Act of 1936, $155 million are hereby permanently canceled. Rural Cooperative Development Grants, $22,500,000. Rural Energy for America Program, $1,300,000. Rural Utility Service, Rural Water and Waste Disposal Program, including transfers of funds, $500 million. Rural Electrification and Telecommunications Loans Program Account, including transfer of funds, $6,500,000. In addition, for expenses necessary to carry out the direct and guaranteed loan programs, $30 million. Distance learning, tele telemedicine and broadband program, including cancellation of funds, $15 million. Title IV, domestic food programs, Office of the Undersecretary for Food, Nutrition and Consumer Services, $689,000. Food and Nutrition Service, child nutrition programs, including transfer of funds, $18,770,571,000 to remain available through September 30, 2013. Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, $6,048,250,000 to remain available through September 30, 2013. Gentleman from Georgia. I have an amendment at the desk. We'll report the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Brown of Georgia, page 44, line 19, after the first dollar amount insert reduced by $604 million. Page 80, line 2, after the dollar amount insert increased by $604 million. Gentleman from Georgia is recognized for five minutes. Gentleman from the other gentleman from Georgia. Mr. Chairman, we don't have the amendment yet. Uh, copies of the amendment are being distributed. Ready to proceed? Georgia may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this nation has almost a $14.5 trillion debt. We're spending 40 cents of every dollar the federal government spends, we're borrowing. We've just got to stop the outrageous spending that's going on here in Washington, and both parties have been guilty over the years. This amendment would simply cut 10% out of a program. 10%. It's a, some people say, well, it's just a small amount of money, but as I was doing a town hall meeting back during last week in Georgia, in Houston, Georgia, one lady got up and said, a million dollars makes a lot of difference. It is a lot of money. This does cut a great deal of money out of this out of this program but mr speaker we just have to stop spending money that we don't have it's just absolutely critical the economy depends upon it creating jobs in the private sector depend upon it the future of our nation depends upon it we're in an economic emergency mr speaker and if we don't stop spending money that we don't have we're going to have an economic collapse of this nation i'm a physician I've worked in emergency rooms. I've seen a doctor open up a man's chest and do open heart massage in the 
emergency room trying to keep a patient alive. It's time for open heart massage of our economy. We've got to stop spending money that we don't have. We've got to put this country back on the right financial course and start creating jobs out in the private sector. And my amendment will be just one small step towards that. So, Mr. Speaker, I hope that my colleagues will support this amendment so that we can put this country back on the right course, so that we can create jobs in the private sector and can have a strong economy again. I yield back. The gentleman yields back this time. The gentleman from California. Raise an opposition. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd be curious if your town hall meeting you got up and asked people, would you rather take $604 million out of the program that feeds women, infant, and children, or would you like to take $604 million out of the Defense Department for a war that we're putting on a credit card, for an Afghan war that we're putting on a credit card, the Iraq war we're putting on a credit card, or the prescription drug program that didn't, wasn't paid for under the Republican program? How about asking the people of choices? We, are, uh, we just authorized a defense uh, a, a bill in, in, a, in committee where we talked about billions and billions of dollars. And, and I, those are all borrowed money. So why don't we get our priority state? We spent three hours here last night discussing the, what the implications are of cutting the WIC program. I don't think this is a country that wants to balance its ba budget on the backs of the poorest people in the United States, on the people most vulnerable, on the people that need just basic services. And that's what this amendment does. Mr. Brown, I know you're interested in cutting, squeezing, and trimming. But there are places to do that, and this is not one of them. Certainly, if you were here on the floor listening to the passions of last night of three hours of debate on what the implications were for cutting WIC program, and uh, it seems to have none of that uh, was listened to by you, because this is a amendment that goes right back to reducing that account by $604 million. Take the money out of the people most vulnerable in the United States to write down the deficit and ignore the Defense Department, ignore the spending for weapons programs, ignore the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, ignore everything that is with DOD, and expose everything that's with people in poverty. This is a wrong amendment, and I hope it's Would soundly defeated. Mr. Gentleman, you? Yes, sir. I thank the gentleman for yielding. To answer your question, I want to do both. I think every dollar that the federal government spends needs to be looked at. And we're spending money that we don't have, even in DOD. I think we could cut a lot of, of uh, funding there, particularly with the wasteful spending that the Department of Defense does, that we all recognize. So I want to do it all. We've got, the thing is, if we continue down this road, that we're on economically, everybody's going to be poor. Nobody's going to have money for any, any groceries. Nobody's going to be able to get any uh, health care. We're just going to be in a, in a financial quagmire as a nation. And so it's absolutely critical, in my opinion, that we do emergent procedures to try to get this country back on the right course economically. So the answer to your question that you asked me very graciously, I answer. Yes, we need to do all of the above, and I'm, I'm eager to do both. I you back. Thank you for the time. Thank you. It's his time. The gentleman yields back his time. Who seeks time? The gentleman from Mr. Georgia. Mr. Chair, I move to strike the last word in opposition You're to this amendment. The and, recognized and I, for five minutes. I, I, I want to say I, th I think Dr. Brown has raised a lot of good points in terms of our financial future in America today. For every dollar we spend, 40 cents is borrowed. Uh, the national debt right now is 95 percent of the GDP. Clearly, we have to make some very difficult choices ahead. And that's why in this committee, Mark, we actually have reduced WIC funding already, $686 million. Now, these numbers aren't random. Um, WIC participation in 2010 was $9.2 million. In 2011, it's 8.9 million. Our committee mark for FY 2012 contemplates a participation level of 8.3 million. However, if the economy does not improve and the number goes back up with contingency funds, it, we have enough money to uh, fund a participation level of over 9 million. But it's very difficult. 
Mr. Chairman, because as we said many times during yesterday's debate, that the only budget that has actually passed either House is the Ryan budget, and our 302B allocation funding level comes from that budget. The, the President's own budget failed in the Senate 97 to 0. The Democrat leadership in the Senate is unable to pass a budget. They're not trying to pass a budget. So using the 302B allocation, which we have, we have come up with these numbers, not done in random, not done um, with any uh, uh, recklessness at all. I mean, we're trying to be very careful to make sure no one falls through the crack. But because this is a delicate card house, I rise in opposition to the gentleman's amendment and yield back the balance of my time. The yields back. Questions on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Brown. Those in favor of the amendment signify so by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. Opinion of the chair, the noes have it. Mr. Speaker. The gentleman from Georgia. I ask for a recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia will be postponed. Clerk will read. What purpose does the gentlelady from North Carolina seek recognition? <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. Clerk will report the amendment. <clears throat> the gentlelady has one printed and one unprinted amendment. Can you specify which one you wish to? Bring it up is at the this printed case? amendment. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number two, printed in the Congressional Record, offered by Ms. Fox of North Carolina, page 45, line one, after the dollar amount, insert reduced by $75 million. <coughs> page 45, line three, after the dollar amount, insert reduced by $7,500,000. Page 80, line two, after the dollar amount, insert increased by $82,500,000. <clears throat> Ask the gentlelady from North Carolina, is this the correct amendment? Yes, sir. The gentlelady is recognized for five minutes in support of her amendment. Uh, this amendment? Order. Gentlelady may proceed. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, my amendment today is an effort to save taxpayers hard-earned money by ending money, funding for an unnecessary program that spends money coming to the federal government from our hard-working taxpayers. Mr. Chairman, I want to say that I very much believe in breastfeeding. We wouldn't have a human race here today if it weren't for the fact that breastfeeding has been in existence since the beginning of time. However, I am opposed to the federal government funding breastfeeding programs. Under the Special Supplemental Program for Women, Infants, and Children, or the WIC program, Congress directed the United States Department of Agriculture to create a national program for the promotion of breastfeeding. In fiscal 2010, the federal government spent $85 million to educate women on how to breastfeed. We're facing a national debt of over $14 trillion. Spending taxpayer money to promote breastfeeding is simply not the proper role of the federal government and serves to illustrate just one reason, government mission creep, that we are so deeply in debt. In the last 10 years, administrative costs for the WIC program have grown by 72 percent, while enrollment has increased by only 26 percent. It is difficult to understand how this program's bureaucracy has grown three times as fast as its enrollment. Again, it's an accepted fact that breastfeeding is good for infants and mothers, and I support mothers who choose to breastfeed. But coaching women on breastfeeding is not the role of, the wa of Washington. This program came to my attention earlier this year because of the budget crunches that all levels of government are feeling. And I was contacted by counties in North Carolina about this program. And it, it was brought to my attention that most of the money is being used to pay salaries 
and benefits, some is being used for travel expenses, and some is being used for cell phone use so that the peer counselors are available 24 hours a day to the people that uh, they are counseling. My colleagues across the aisle will shout about this, and I may even be opposed by the colleagues on this side of the aisle, but last year my colleagues across the aisle cut more than $550 million from the WIC program to fund unrelated activities at the USDA. These were totally unrelated. It was obviously not a high priority then. If we want to promote the health and well-being of women, infants, and children, then let's get serious about it by creating a job-friendly environment that puts people back to work and allows American families to keep more of what they earn. Let's stop spending money on every well-intentioned program and return the federal government to its constitutionally mandated purposes. Mr. Chairman, the American people are tired of Washington taking their hard earned dollars in taxes and wasting it on a bloated federal bureaucracy. It's time we stop the culture of spending in Washington, and that's why I urge adoption of my amendment, which will save taxpayers $82.5 million in just one year. The money will go into the spending reduction account, and I want to say my total concern here is the spending of hard earned taxpayers dollars on a program that the federal government has no business running. I yield back. Gentle lady from, from North Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It, it has come to my attention that I need to seek unanimous consent to withdraw the amendment that I've, and offer an amendment that was not printed in the record. Objection. I apologize. Is there objection? Seeing none, so ordered. And the amendment is withdrawn. The clerk will report the other amendment. Amendment offered by Ms. Fox of North Carolina, page 44, line 19, after the, after the dollar amount, insert reduced by $82,500,000. Page 45, line 1, after the dollar amount, insert reduced by $75 million. Page 45, line 3, after the dollar amount, insert reduced by $7,500,000. Page 80, line 2, after the dollar amount, insert increased by $82,500,000. Gentlelady from North Carolina is recognized for five minutes in support of her amendment. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will not uh, take advantage of uh, this mistake that I made. I appreciate the indulgence of the ranking member and the chair of the committee. Uh, and I would just say that I would appreciate very much having the support uh, for my amendment, and I thank you again for the indulgence. Gentle lady yields back. Who seeks time in opposition to the amendment? Gentleman from California. Mr. Chairman, I claim opposition. General Rise in opposition. Five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <laughs> again, how many times do we have to keep attacking the WIC account? Uh, women, infant, and children. America has long decided that we ought to be taking care of the most vulnerable people in America. They're women who are pregnant, low income. What we found if you don't invest in teaching them how to have proper nutrition during their pregnancy, you have a risk of having a low weight baby. A low weight baby, as Dr. McDermott told us yesterday on the floor, can cost up to a, a quarter million dollars in, uh, in incubation and, and hospital costs. Um, that this is preventable with good nutrition. We go on to teach women once that baby is born how to breastfeed that child. Uh, we know that that is, is, is good health practices. Um, and then we keep the children uh, with nutrition in the first five years. That's why it's called women, infant, and children. It's about pregnancy, birth, and raising that child. And this amendment wants to take $82 million out of that program, which instructs women how to do proper breastfeeding. It works with the states to do educational programs. We spent three hours last night debating the consequences of these cuts. And it's one of those <laughs> penny-wise, super-pound foolish. 
It's also one of those where you know the cost of everything and the value of nothing. There is a lot of value in keeping women well nourished during uh, pregnancy and certainly keeping that newborn child uh, well fed and nourished. To strike money from this program is ill-founded and I strongly oppose the amendment. General yields back this time. Who seeks time? Gentleman from Georgia. Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to take this time to uh, yield to the gentlelady from North Carolina who is an expert on this topic and whom I, I rely on, and I want to thank the, uh, the lady for her, her, uh, her comments today. I, I thank the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Chairman, for yielding time for me. I, I think it's unfortunate that our colleagues on the other side of the aisle uh, characterize our doing our best to bring fiscal sanity to this country by saying that we do not care for people who are poor or disadvantaged. Mr. Chairman, I grew up as poor as anybody in this body, and I know what it means to be poor and to be hungry. I have no malice toward any person in this country, none. No malice toward anyone in this body. However, we are on the verge of a fiscal disaster in this country. There are many things that could be done at the local level and the state level that should be done at the local and state level, but absolutely should not be done at the federal level. Again, my colleagues across the aisle come here and say, what a shame it is that you are picking on the WIC program. Well, they took over $500 million out of the WIC program last year, put it in a totally unrelated program, and said nothing about it. We didn't come to the floor and say, you are mistreating poor and disadvantaged women and children. No comments were made about that. And, and it, I think it's very unfortunate, again, that that's what we're, how we're characterized. I believe that we have an obligation, a, an obligation given to us by God to help our fellow Americans who are less fortunate than we are. But it is not our responsibility as members of Congress to tax hard-working Americans who are working all the time just to pay their bills and survive and use that money to help other people. That's not our job. Our job is to do everything we can to create a good environment in this country for everyone to succeed, and that's the direction that I want to go. And by lowering our uh, dependency on foreign governments, we will make our country a better place to be. As my colleagues have said over and over and over again in the debate on this bill, we're borrowing 43 cents for every dollar that we spend. We have uh, a $14 trillion debt. There's huge debate about our raising the debt ceiling. That's going to be facing us. Do we really want to ignore the opportunity to save $82.5 million in a program that has no business being run out of the federal government and help us deal with the big issue that's dealing with us? That's what Congress should be dealing with. We should be dealing with the big issues. We should let these other issues be dealt with at the local and state level. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. Does the gentleman from Georgia yield back his time? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman back the yields back. Who seeks time? The gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Kingston. Mr. Chair, well, I oppose this amendment. The gentleman, I, I gentleman want to is thank, recognized for five minutes. I, I sort of move straight to the last word. I want to thank my colleague from North Carolina for uh, putting this discussion on the table because I think that it is important for us to look at the WIC program, make sure that we're doing everything as efficiently and as effectively as possible and that we're putting the money in the right direction. And we, we had a very thorough, about a six-hour debate about WIC yesterday. It's a delicate card house that we're trying to balance with our committee mark.
But I, I think that the more sunshine we have, not just on WIC, but on other federal feeding programs, I think the better product we're going to come up with. So uh, she and I have had some discussions on this. We're going to continue to have discussions on it. But um, I wanted to say I, I think that it's a, it's a good debate to be having, um, although that I am um, not supportive of the amendment. And I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Who seeks time? The gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Uh, Dr. Brown. I move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield as much time as she may consume to my good friend, Virginia Fox. Dr. Fox. The gentleman from Georgia has to stay on his feet. I thank my colleague from Georgia for yielding time, Mr. Uh, Chairman. And I just want to make uh, a point in response to my other colleague from Georgia. I agree with him. We are bringing light to many of these programs, and I think it's very important that we do so. I want to point out again, the WIC bureaucracy has grown three times as fast as its enrollment in the last 10 years. This is an increase of $800 million in administrative cost. If we are not prepared at least to cut administrative costs and programs that have no business being offered at the federal level, then we are never going to get control of our debt and our deficit. And I, I want to encourage both my Republican and Democratic colleagues to think about this. We have got to have accountability and we have got to start cutting, especially in the area of administration. And with that, I yield back. Now you back. The gentleman from Georgia yields back. There being no further requests for time. The questions on the amendment offered by the gentlelady from North Carolina. Those in favor signify so by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. The opinion of the chair, the noes have it. On that, Mr. Sp uh, Chairman, I would request a recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentlelady from North Carolina will be postponed. <laughs> Clerk will read. Page 45, line 12, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, $71,173,308,000. Commodity Assistance Program, $192,500,000 to remain available through September 30, 2013. Nutrition Programs Administration, $125 million. Title V, Foreign Assistance and Related Programs, Foreign Agricultural Service Salaries and Expenses, including transfers of funds, $175 million. Gentleman from Georgia. Mr. Speaker, I have an amendment, an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 12, printed in the congressional record, offered by Mr. Brown of Georgia. The gentleman's gentleman from Georgia is recognized for five thank, minutes in support. Thank you, Mr. Amendment. Chairman. I rise to offer my amendment, which would cut $175 million in FY 2012 by eliminating the Foreign Agricultural Service. This is a corporate welfare program that essentially gives handouts to private businesses that don't need taxpayer dollars in order to grow their profits. It is essential that we make significant cuts to our budget this year and focus on reducing our deficit and tackle our debt. This is an unnecessary program and a waste of money that we could use to reduce this fiscal burden. I understand the position that my dear friend from Georgia is in. It is true that the Ryan budget is the only budget to pass either house. I supported the Ryan budget, and I supported the Republican Study Committee budget, which would have reduced even more money from this bill. Regardless of how one voted on a particular budget, we all have an obligation to move the debate in a direction that calls for more serious spending cuts. It's critical for the economic future of our nation. It's critical for our children and our grandchildren. It's critical in creating new jobs and having a stronger economy here in America. So I urge my colleagues to support this amendment and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Who seeks time?
Questions on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia. Those in favor signify so by saying aye. Those opposed, no. The opinion of the chair, the noes have it. Gentleman from Georgia. I request a vote recorded. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia will be postponed. Clerk will read. Page 49, line 3, Food for Peace, Title I, Direct Credit, and Food for Progress Program Account, including transfer of funds, $2,385,000. Food for Peace, Title II Grants, $1,040,198,000. Governor from Indiana. From Indiana? Excuse me, this, for what purpose does the gentleman from Arizona seek recognition? Um, I have an amendment at table, number 29. Clerk will, clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Gosar of Arizona, page 49, line 23, after the dollar amount, insert reduced by $100 million. Page 80, line 2, after the dollar amount, insert increased by $100 million. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes in, su in support of his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I rise in support of my Chairman. amendment that would cut $100 million from the Billion Dollar Food for Peace program and redirect it to the rural American communities, specifically the Rural Business Development Loan Program. This $100 million will provide resources to rural businesses and the development of loan programs. Small rural businesses and Indian tribes and community organizations can use these loans to jumpstart businesses in our devastated rural communities. I'll give you one example, the Bennett Freeze. In the 111th Congress, we lifted the ban on this part of the Navajo Nation last year. This ban prohibited any type of improvement to homes, businesses, and the livelihood. And as a result, the Bennett Freeze resulted in an area that is worse than many third world nations. What we're trying to do is address this need and try to provide some resources to this group of folks. We need to address the high unemployment by empowering our rural communities. Please vote in favor of this amendment. Gentleman yields back. Who seeks time? Gentleman from California. Rise in opposition. Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. This amendment uh, reduces $100 million for uh, food for peace. I don't know if Mr. Kosar was here, the gentleman from Arizona was here uh, last night, but there was a lot of discussion about American image abroad, and certainly in a time when uh, the world economy is hurting. Uh, this World F Food for Peace program is exactly that. Uh, we buy American goodwill. Uh, we buy this food from American growers, farmers. They produce, the, they produce it. Uh, we buy it. Uh, we ship it and, uh, in American uh, ships. And we distribute it uh, in a food program that, that buys a lot of goodwill for America. I don't want to think at a time when uh, conflicts of this globe are generated in cultures of poverty where people don't have access to a proper nutrition diet. Uh, I know from being a Peace Corps volunteer, the first thing people try to do is figure out where they're going to get enough food to eat. You can't go to school uh, with kids because you're hustling to get firewood, you're hustling to get water, you're hustling to find anything that will produce uh, food for the day. Uh, you cannot um, uh, a, a woman can't do uh, any of the other things that might uh, raising livestock if she's just uh, trying to uh, hustle for food all day long. Uh, I mean, it just seems to me that the most basic investment in preventing uh, violence and war is investment in, in nutrition and trying to get particularly people in the poorest sectors of the world. We've got sub-Sahara Africa that if, if people don't get fed there, you're going to have migrations of millions and millions of people and, and there's going to be no place to put them. Nobody's going to want big uh, uh, immigration of, from, of starving people from uh, other uh, parts of Africa. It's going to have an impact on us. Our intelligence agencies tell us this is a this security threat. Uh, investment in uh, food at, for people at the basic level is absolutely essential. This is food raised by American farmers, paid for uh, by American dollars, and sent to with where most needed in the world. And it's a very good program, and it does indeed uh, trade food for peace and stability. And I think it would be unwise to cut it by a hundred million dollars. Gentleman yields back. back. Who seeks time? Seeing not, gentleman from Georgia, Dr. Mr. Brown. I move to strike the last word. Gentleman is recognized for five minutes.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had an amendment following this one that would have totally eliminated funding for this program and thus would present a problem to the House. So I'm going to withdraw my amendment since Mr. Uh, Dr. Gozar has introduced his. But it's absolutely critical that we stop spending money we simply do not have. And, um, and frankly, I don't like transferring money from account to account because I think the only transfer that we should do is transfer it into the debt reduction program so that we can reduce the federal debt. It's absolutely critical for the economic future of this nation. So since I'm going to withdraw my amendment following this, I wanted to get up and speak about this particular amendment and just say that I really appreciate what uh, my good friend from California, Mr. Farr, was saying about poor people. I'm a medical doctor and I, I deal with problems and I, uh, with nutrition for my patients. I appreciate what Dr. Fox did with her amendment about eliminating this breastfeeding program. But you see, we're constrained by the Constitution, or should be, and it's, Congress has gotten way, way away from the original intent of the Constitution. We cannot try to feed everybody in the world. We cannot continue to try to be a nanny state for everybody, even in this country. The private sector, if we mobilize them, there would be plenty of dollars to take care of the needs of American citizens and as well as people around the world by leaving dollars in the hands of the private sector, in people's hands, in churches and synagogues and mosques and, and d different areas so, uh, of the private sector, Salvation Army, etc. So I, I think we need to, as a Congress, start being fiscally responsible, and we have been fiscally unresponsible for many years in Democrat as well as Republican administrations as well as Democrat and Republican controls of Congress. So we just have to stop spending money, and I appreciate uh, Mr. Farr, and I would be glad to yield to you, sir. Thank you for yielding. I